Hi guys, it's Quinn here. If you enjoy my videos, consider hitting the like button. It's the only way the YouTube algorithm really notices me. Today we're going to talk about a science fiction book that I bet most of you have never heard of. Rick Remender's Low. Low is absolutely one of the best graphic novels I've ever read. And if you've not read it, I suggest you stop this video and grab it because this is absolutely worth your time, money, and attention. Now, if you don't care that much about spoilers, continue forth. But don't worry, I won't be spoiling too much of the story. In Low, almost all of the future humans have migrated underwater and now all live in dome cities due to the fact that the surface had become too hot for normal human habitation. This is because this story is set billions of years in our future and the sun has expanded to a red giant. The protagonist of our story, Stel Kane, lives in the dome city of Salus with her husband and children. Using robotic probes, she desperately searches for a new planet that can support human life. The dome cities themselves are crumbling. The filtration systems which keep them oxygenated are becoming continuously less efficient. The citizens of all the known cities know that they do not have long before none of the cities can support life. Because of this, Salus and the other dome cities display many aspects of the dying society. The governments are corrupt. People are addicted to drugs that allow them to escape from reality. The populace has grown apathetic, depressed, and careless. Humanity had nearly run out of hope entirely. And yet, one day, a signal is received, and a planet has been found. But Stell will have to journey to a world now unknown to humankind to collect these coordinates. And I'll just let you know right now that this journey is not easy. Rick Remender pushes these characters to their breaking point and really test who they are and really test how long they can actually cling to the hope of a better future. I think one of the biggest themes of this book is that hope is all that matters. How do we hold on to hope when all seems lost? Well, if you've given up on hope, then all is lost anyway. So the only reasonable option is to keep fighting to, as they say, rage against the dying of the light. The character Stel Kane is essentially the embodiment of this concept, relentlessly hopeful in the face of devastating odds. I remember when I was your age, finding out that our world would one day be consumed by the sun. What a waste of time all this is, it seemed to me. No matter what we build, no matter what we do, no matter what, the sun will expand and eventually consume it all. I felt like a powerless observer of the end of my species. It wasn't until I met your mother that I could see any reason to try. That we can find strength in the unity of family. Strength enough to find a better tomorrow. Remender in this book really centers the Cain family and their misadventures. They are put through a lot and their relationships with one another are so complex and realistic. There's something about the way Remender writes these characters that makes them come alive. You really feel like you know them. You really root for them. And this, of course, makes the book really hard to read sometimes because you really don't want anything bad to happen to these characters. But ultimately, as I said, this book is about hope. So there is a light at the end of the tunnel. The world building is another giant highlight of this graphic novel. The dome cities are distinct from each other, they feel ancient, and they each have their own distinct history and culture. One thing I find particularly interesting is the concept of the helmsman. Apparently in the early days of the dome city there had been several helmsman suits, each capable of immense destruction. As the eons passed, most of those suits were lost to time or destroyed. The last suit in Salus belongs to the family of Joel Kane, the husband of Stel Kane, having been passed down throughout the generations. The suits only responded to specific DNA, which is why it was important that they be passed down through the family line. Humanity has also begun to evolve and diverge into different groups. There are many species of humanoid aquatic creatures, like the vampiric mermaids who dwell in the deep, dark places of the ocean. The world above has also continued to develop separately from the world below. The humans, which had been left behind, had adapted to the new sun and continued their own society on the surface, creating essentially what was a utopia. 
However, much of their culture is based around hatred for those below. They were embittered because their own ancestors had been left to die on the surface eons ago, when the ones in their dome cities refused to rescue them. Because of this, the surface dwellers, who call themselves the Burnt, have no intention of allowing the dome citizens to escape the earth. As their ancestors had been left to die, they would allow those below to perish. Though we Neo Sapiens are descended from Homo Sapiens, we are burnt by the surface. We adapted to the good sun instead of hiding from it, a sun that is slowly expanding still, becoming a red giant star that will one day engulf the earth. Our small-minded ancestors saw this as their doom. Fearful and superstitious monkeys have always misunderstood the sun. We, however, know it is part of the natural and cosmically intended evolution of our species. Neanderthals and Cro-Magnons both came from the same common ancestor, but the superior Cro-Magnons survived, while their inferior cousins were destroyed. Similarly, we burnt are superior to Homo sapiens, having faced our natural evolution, while our ancestors fled to the depths of the sea, we have adapted and flourished, put an end to all war, famine, and disease, created the first post-scarcity society. I found this particular part of the story where we encounter the burnt to be so interesting. Evolution is powerful. Throughout the eons of the existence of life on Earth, any species that has failed to adapt to changes in environment has gone extinct. But curiously, often rapid changes facilitate rapid adaptation. This, in addition to the radiation of the sun, which caused mutations occur, is what allowed the humans in this series on the surface to evolve. They became the Neo-Sapiens, the next stage in human evolution. The story of life on the surface of Earth didn't just end when most humans went underwater. It didn't just end when we left. Once they were gone, a new society took their place. Perhaps a better society than the one which existed before. When it comes to Earth, there are life forms which fill every possible niche. They exist and thrive in places that would be instantly deadly to most life. To quote one of my favorite childhood movies, Jurassic Park, life finds a way. This concept, of course, has been explored in many science fiction series, and I really enjoy how Remender uses it here. Now, if you've never read any of Rick Remender's work, you are missing out because he is an absolute master at what he does. And when we combine Rick Remender's incredible story, his rich, complex, and deeply emotionally compelling characters with the beautiful artwork of Greg Tuccini, then we get what I personally believe to be a masterpiece. And I'm not exaggerating. So if you're into great world building, great characters, and great storylines that keep you on your toes, this is the book for you absolutely 100% get low, and I'll definitely be covering some more of the lore in future videos. Thanks guys. Just a heads up for those of you that may be interested, my next graphic novel, The Lie Behind the Star, is launching February 2023. You can sign up now to get on the email mailing list to get notified as soon as it launches. More information on my website, link in the description. Thank you guys so much.